My name is Tracy Macklin. I am the Program Director for the Cybersecurity Professional Science Masters here at Cal State San Marcos. Today I'm going to talk to you about the program history and the goals, what it's here to achieve. I'm going to go over the curriculum and uh, talk to you about the professors and then um, solicit your questions, comments, and feedback which we will arrange to respond to in the future. So first off, the instructors come from the College of Science and Math and the College of Business Administration here. Here you can see um, Dr. Sun teaches the Info Systems and Security Management class. He is from our College of Business, an MIS professor. Dr. Sharif is teaching cryptography. Uh, he is a math professor. Dr. Colas is teaching organizational behavior and leadership. He is from our, our, um, our College of Business Administration Management. We have a new faculty member teaching network security. Dan Ostermiller is from um, industry locally here in San Diego and he is teaching the secure software class. Cameron Ahmad is teaching um, security risk and technology assessment and also he is teaching the um, offensive security and penetration testing class which I do not have listed on this slide. Dr. Ali Ahmadina is, Ahmadinia is a uh, computer science professor teaching secure operating systems. Now I'm teaching the communications for technology class which is an introduction to cybersecurity uh, and it's a class where we do a lot of um, current events plus we cover the basics. I'm going to guess I'm going to talk about that a little more later. Also at present, I am teaching intrusion detection investigation and the governance and policy class. Additionally, I'm doing the semester in residence, which I will cover um, in a few minutes. So the program history, the College of Science and Math has an advisory board that's composed of um, local technology organizations. They get together, I believe, three times a year, and they um, talk about how our college can better serve the community by creating new majors or incorporating curriculum that will help our students when they graduate and go into the workforce. So they recommended cybersecurity as an area that wasn't adequately covered up here and uh, they started a sort of a exploratory committee to see if it could get done. So they looked at whether or not it should be a bachelor's degree or a regular computer science master's or what have you and determined that we would like to, they would like to see us do a, a professional science master's. Professional science master's incorporates both technology and business elements. So you could see that by who the professors are who are teaching here. So uh, the idea is that there are some majors like cybersecurity where technology alone is not a solution and a business or operational um, policy and procedure alone are not a solution that it, it requires both in a well-developed security program in order to actually secure an organization. So this was approved right away uh, I believe the fastest ever approval for a master's program around here at any rate um, in the summer of 2015 and then we took the first cohort in the fall of 2015. I, that may not as sound uh, astonishing to you but that is amazingly fast um, for the way uh, higher ed organizations operate. Just this year we got approval to uh, move the program completely online which we're going to be able to offer a completely online version starting this fall. So the goals of this program are creating cybersecurity leaders. So we're, so we're incorporating leadership. You saw that um, management class, that organizational behavior class, communication, because the advisory board <clears throat> tells that us over and over again every time we meet with them that it is not enough for our graduates to be good at the technology or good at putting together a policy or assessing risk, that they must be able to communicate that with the rest of the organization in order to, in order to, be, um, in order to be optimally functional. 
So they need to have the leadership communication organizational skills it takes in order to implement a large program, which might not be entirely welcomed by everybody in the organization. Additionally, you, they have to have broad technical knowledge because you can't really manage what you don't understand. You can't make good decisions about how to architect your network or what kind of operating system security you're going to have or how you're going to develop your software applications or assess the software applications that you're buying. You can't really, you can't really make those decisions unless you understand them. So this is a full range program. We're going from one end of the security program to the other. We're going through risk and policy and governance and um, you know, operations on one end through software development, network security, intrusion detection, penetration test, so on, on the other. So it's a very broad program. So here's an example curriculum. Now there are times when we change this up just a little bit, but this is what it might look like. So semester one, this is an example of the current cohorts um, course sequence. So in the fall, they had operating system security, info systems and security management, and then intro to cybersecurity. Now I taught the intro to cybersecurity class, so I'm, gonna, I'm going to um, talk about that most. This is the class um, largely concerned with understanding current events, understanding fundamental concepts like, um, like confidentiality, integrity, availability, understanding the difference between risk and vulnerability and threat and all of those things. So this is a, a basic introduction to cybersecurity, cybersecurity concepts. And while we're doing that, we're learning communication and writing and um, very clear writing and presentation skills and other elements of communication because we expect to use those elements of communication all the way through the program. So in the second semester, they're taking the organizational behavior and leadership class, a network security class, and uh, cryptography. For cryptography, they're learning the fundamentals of, of crypto, uh, some of the current um, cryptographic schemes, and uh, doing a little bit of Python programming while they're at it. Network security, we're looking at uh, network architecture, we're looking at um, packet analysis, maybe a little packet crafting, common attacks, that kind of thing in network security. This is not an intro to networks, so when you come in uh, to the program, as you can imagine, you need to already understand TCP IP, and you need to understand addressing, and um, the OSI model or TCP model, whatever, and so on. So. These are some of the things you should already know by the time you get here. Similarly, with operating systems, you should know the fundamentals of, of operating systems and how they work, what's a kernel, what's memory, you know, the fetch and execute cycle, and so on and so forth. So semester three, governance and policy. So that sounds um, pretty dry, but actually it's pretty interesting. There, of course, are some elements of governance that are pretty dry as we talk about the different frameworks and so on. But in this class, we do a lot of hands-on, you know, looking at, um, for instance, uh, court cases and trying to understand what was the governance or policy failure there and looking at actual policies along with a, a framework like NIST or ISO and trying to determine if those policies um, meet the requirements of some one of the frameworks that we're looking at. Secure software development, the other class, that is going to go through the common methods of ensuring that your software development um, process is using, um, using a model that will end up with a secure application in the end. So you do have to know a little bit of programming there, but um, it's a good fun class. Semester four, so security risk and technology assessment. In this uh, class, we're really talking about how to create a risk model for an organization. Now, it's really common that you uh, look at the risk of, of some particular activity or implementation and you decide that, that there's a procedural um, control that you can 
uh, use in order to adjust that risk. But it's also very common that you're going to implement a technology and then you have to assess the technology to determine if the implementation cost is larger than the problem uh, that is larger than the risk you were facing if you don't implement something. So we're, we're going to try to do sort of an end-to-end -end there to understand how to evaluate the risk, how to evaluate the cost, and how to evaluate the technology that you might implement in order to address that risk. Then offensive security and penetration testing. Well, what can I say about that? Um, that is probably everybody's favorite most fun class. We're going to look at um, typical offensive security and penetration testing um, activities. And, you know, we're not going to just do the technical, technical activities. We're also going to talk about uh, the rules of engagement, how to uh, report your findings, and so on. So we're also going to do something called a semester in residence writing requirement. Now, I haven't talked about the semester in residence project yet, but your um, what they call the culminating experience, my fingers are doing quote marks here, the culminating experience for this um, master's program is a project, it's not a thesis, it's a project, well it can be a thesis, but or it could be you're going to develop a tool, or you're going to do a, you know, a large analysis, or uh, you're going to do an internship, it could be any of those things, but what you're going to do in the, um, in the, the, the second to the last semester is find a um, sponsor and write a proposal. And in this um, semester in residence writing requirement class, we're going to develop that proposal so that by the end of the class, you've got a proposal for your project and you know what you're going to do. And then in semester five, semester in residence project, that's when you're going to do your your internship, your project, your analysis, whatever you're going to do. So that's their last semester. And then the, the only taking one other class that semester, and that's intrusion detection and investigation, which is a lot of analysis to determine um, if there has been intrusion, what was the nature of the intrusion, and what did they find, and what are, what are we going to do about it. And that, of course, we're going to do investigation reports so that you have a uh, you understand how to create a report that could go to law enforcement or that could go to uh, lawyers or what have you. So that's that's uh, that's also a fun class, but kind of a lot of work because these things sometimes are difficult to figure out. All right, so that's the curriculum, and I shall now move on. Oh, so you know, here's something that I found in a couple years ago. This was years ago now when I went to. Um, talk to a class or give a presentation I can no longer remember about what is it what do you need to know or what what skill set do you need to be a, an, an information security officer and someone had put up this reddit comment and um, you know they started listing all the different things you need to know Linux and Windows fundamental compliance and assurance framework vulnerability assessment pen testing forensics social blah, 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 on and on and on. Huge list of things you need to know. And then people started um, chiming in with all these other things. Access control, telecommunications, governance, crypto, on and on and on. Look, at it goes on and on. And then still more people chimed in with technical writing, business calculations, soft skills. So this is the last slide, <laughs> but this list of things you need to know in order to be good at cybersecurity is enormous and broad. That is one of the reasons why when developing this um, master's program, we went for a very broad set of skills so that someone who graduated from this program would have experience with all of these things, as many of them as we could fit into the program. So thank you for listening to me. I, I hope that you're interested in the program and that you contact us for more information.